Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and I've got a ton of laptops on my to-do list to review. We're going to start knocking some of these out. I got in a few weeks ago the ThinkPad X1 Nano Gen 3 from Lenovo, and this is a very lightweight but full-featured ThinkPad that, of course, is running Windows 11, and we're going to check this thing out in this review and see what it's all about. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now, the price point on this will vary based on configuration. This one, as configured, is about $1,800, give or take. This has a 13.3-inch display. It's at a 2K resolution with touch, as you can see here. Uh, this is running at 2160 by 1350. It's an IPS display with nice viewing angles. It does have a bit of an anti-glare mat on it, so it's not all that shiny. And this also is running at 450 nits at 100% of sRGB. So it's probably good for basic photo and video editing, along, of course, with document editing. This is really designed as kind of the executive's laptop. It is, though, pretty well powered here. It's got an i7-1360p, although the small size here hinders the overall performance a bit, which we'll get to as we work our way through the review. This one has 16 gigabytes of soldered on RAM and 512 gigabytes of NVMe storage. Now, of course, the big selling point on this laptop is its size and weight. It is incredibly lightweight, so much so when you first pick it up, it doesn't feel like there's anything inside of it. The weight comes in at 2.18 pounds or 991 and a half grams, so under a kilogram, yet it is a full-featured Windows computer. And the build actually feels very nice. It doesn't feel like a cheap piece of plastic here. It's got uh, magnesium and carbon fiber for its casing. It feels very nice and certainly very high quality like many other ThinkPad products are. And what I also like about it is that it's very well balanced here. So when I lift the display lid up here, the keyboard largely stays in place, which is always a good sign that it's very nicely constructed. It does feel very similar to the first generation one I looked at about two years ago. But that's not a bad thing. It's just a very nicely constructed, high-quality laptop that feels pretty rugged, yet is very light at the same time. And like other ThinkPads, it has a very nice keyboard with well-spaced keys, although it doesn't have the same depth of key travel that some of the larger ThinkPads are known for. So this keyboard feels more like one of the Lenovo consumer-focused yoga devices, which is not bad, but it's just not as deep and as tactile, perhaps, as some of the more traditional ThinkPads are. But you do get your little nub here for navigating the track point, and you have physical buttons here above the track pad for using the track point, and then you also get the click pad down below here. And like most of the ThinkPads that we've looked at, the inputs here are very, very good. The keyboard is backlit. You've got a fingerprint reader over here as well, and it kind of checks all the boxes for a nice efficient business laptop. But because it's efficient, you don't get much in the way of ports, but the ones they provided are good. So what you have here on the left-hand side are two Thunderbolt 4 ports, and Thunderbolt ports are full service ports in that they can provide power to the laptop, but they can also send video out along with providing access to Thunderbolt and USB data devices. You could also have a docking station on your desk that this would plug into. And of course, this will work with external GPUs because it does have Thunderbolt ports here. You additionally have a headphone microphone jack here, and that is it for the ports. On the other side here, you've got your exhaust area for the fan and the power switch, but that is it. So a little Spartan here uh, when it comes to port selection, but that's typically par for the course on some of these more efficient executive level laptops. It does, though, have a very nice webcam, which you probably need in the workplace these days. It shoots at 1080p. The image is nice and sharp, a good field of vision on the camera as well. And it has a 2.0 aperture, so it should do well even in more difficult lighting situations. So they definitely spent some time getting that webcam straight. It also has a very nice microphone system built in as well. And this is an infrared webcam, so it will work for Windows Hello. So in addition to using the fingerprint reader, you can also use facial recognition to log in. 
And like many ThinkPads, you have a physical shutter here at the top for closing the lens when it's not in use. So let's take a look now and see how it performs. We'll start with the basics and work our way up from there. We'll begin with web browsing, of course, and we are currently connected to my Wi-Fi 6 access point here at the house. And as you can see, everything is super fast and responsive here, as you would expect, given the fact that this is a modern laptop with modern Wi-Fi and everything here seems to be running quite nicely. You've got the advantage of the touch display here as well. A little bit earlier, I tested out YouTube with a 1080p 60 frames per second video. That played back just fine. I had a couple of drop frames when it first started, and after that, it was able to keep up without issue. So this shouldn't be a problem for browsing the web and watching Netflix and Prime Video and all the other stuff out there. It's certainly very good at those tasks, and that would also include office tasks like Word and Excel. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 343, which puts this one pretty much in line with other i7 processors from this generation for doing these kinds of basic tasks. Next thing I want to take a look at here is video editing. We've got DaVinci Resolve loaded up with a 4K60 video project. And what I'm going to do here is just drop a simple cross dissolve on my timeline. And let's see how fast this thing can render out in real time here. And it does okay. It's a little sluggish, but it's getting it done. So I think if you're doing some of the basic kinds of video editing, not anything with a lot of significant color grading or something, you should be able to get it done on this hardware. One thing to note, though, is that its little fan is definitely running right now. I'm feeling some hot air coming out of the side here. So it is working pretty hard to keep things cool, even with a relatively simple video project here. And that'll be a theme as we continue looking at some other performance aspects of the laptop, including gaming. Let's take a look and see how games run on this. So let's take a look at Fortnite. This is running at 1280 by 800 at the lowest settings. This was the best setting we could find for this laptop. And as you can see here, the frame rate does jump around quite considerably, depending on what's getting rendered on screen and what kind of load is being placed on the Intel processor here. And I think we're experiencing some throttling here as uh, this system really wasn't designed for gaming. It was designed more for office tasks. And this is where you'll see the laptop struggle a bit when it's placed under a more heavy sustain load, as you can see here. I also ran Red Dead Redemption 2, also at 1280 by 800 at the lowest settings. And here we saw some variation in the frame rate as well. But it was still playable between 30 and 45 frames per second, depending on what was getting rendered on screen. So although I would not buy this laptop for its gaming capacity, it's able to run games at a playable frame rate, but you're going to see a good variation of performance given the thermal loads that might be placed on the processor depending on the game that you're playing. And on the 3 d Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,515. And although the graphics performance is not all that much better than the Generation 1 version of the X1 Nano, as you can see, its CPU performance is significantly better. Now, I also have at the top of the chart here a more thoroughly cooled and larger laptop, the Yoga 9i, with the same processor also from Lenovo. And as you can see, that one is tuned to perform a little better because it has more room to keep itself cool. The smaller form factor here does impact its cooling capacity. And to that end, we also ran the 3D Mark stress test. And there we got a failing grade of 72%. So you will lose a good amount of performance here, again, when the laptop is placed under heavy load. But that really is only going to impact things like gaming or video editing, the more bursty kinds of things that I think most people would do with this laptop, like Excel spreadsheets and Word documents, won't be impacted as much by the thermal issues here. The fan, though, is pretty quiet even when it's running full blast. And I have a feeling that Lenovo was really trying to balance the creature comforts of a quiet fan with the thermal requirements of having something so small and compact. Now, as always, coming up with estimates for battery life will depend on what you're doing with the laptop. If you stick to the basics like word processing, Excel, and email, I think you will be in the eight hour range if you keep the display brightness down a bit. Obviously, there'll be much less battery life when you're running games or other more demanding applications. Now, the speakers on this actually sound pretty good for its size. It's not all that tinny. You don't get a lot of bass out of it, but it's a nice range of sound, and it's nice and clear and crisp. 
So I think if you're doing conference calls, that'll be fine. Music will sound okay too, but I think at that point you'll want to attach up some headphones to it. A little bit earlier, we also installed some Linux on here. We ran the latest version of Ubuntu. And like most Lenovo laptops I've tested recently, everything was detected properly, including the touch panel here, as you can see, along with the Wi-Fi and audio and Bluetooth and all in. It was a very nice Linux experience here if you did want to run an alternative operating system on it. So what's the verdict on this one? Well, I think if you are someone who values portability more than performance, you will be very happy with this laptop because it's very well built and extremely lightweight, yet for basic tasks, it performs quite well. It's just that when you're doing more strenuous stuff like gaming or video editing or something that really stresses that processor more, that's where you're going to feel the performance disadvantages of something like this over a larger laptop. In fact, you will find laptops from Lenovo with the very same processor that perform better because they're able to put a more robust cooling system to work to keep things from getting too hot. This one doesn't have that and therefore runs a little bit slower. But again, I think for most corporate executives who are handed this after using another laptop for two years, they'll be quite happy with it. It will do all the Microsoft Office tasks quite well and it won't weigh you down either. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.